everybody, Gen X Psychic Medium back today with a, a really, really, really important video. This video was the one you asked for. On my TikTok lives, a lot of people will bring up Dolores Cannon to me. And in all truth and honesty, I did not know who she was. I kept mixing her up with Lorraine Warren for some reason. Not really all that much different, unfortunately. Um, Dolores Cannon uh, apparently was a psychic investigator. She created her own form of hypnosis. She is still, um, although she has passed away, her products are still out there being seen. She has courses online for this um, hypnosis that she created to retrieve more information out of people. She has books out there like The Search for Hidden Sacred Knowledge Between Death and Life Conversations with a Spirit, Five Lives Remember. Th these guys, these are extremely dangerous books, products, courses. This is divination and this is demonic. When I told my sister in Christ and my dear friend Doreen Virtue about making this video, she says, wait a minute, I knew her. My mind was blown. So today I'm joined by my good friend, Doreen Virtue, my sister in Christ, and she has DoreenVirtue.com. She exposes the new age on a daily basis. I encourage you to go to her Instagram at Doreen Virtue and her YouTube, but I will link all of that down below. Doreen, thank you so much for joining forces with me again to expose this demonic, demonic situation. Uh, thank you, Jen, for having me. And as you said, um, I was a friend of Dolores. We knew each other for, I was trying to figure out last night how long we knew each other, but it was at least 10 years, maybe longer. And um, and so the, kind of the background of how I got into her work was because I thought I was a Christian, but I never read the Bible in its entirety. I cherry picked it. And so as I looked back um, in preparation for this video, I actually I, I downloaded two of Dolores's books that were um, important to me at that time and that had influenced me. And I saw kind of what had happened and how it had influenced my um, deception. So uh, I was always looking for alternatives to the Bible to explain Jesus. And that's really what Dolores started out with. Um, she, she was... <sighs> You, and you met her, I and mean, she looks like her photos. She looks like a woman who would play piano at, a, at your local Methodist church. I mean, wow. you you would, and then, then she'd open her mouth and she'd start talking about greys, the aliens. And she was a, a consummate researcher and teacher. You, could, you couldn't have a light conversation with Dolores. And I, I had many meals with her. I um, gave talks with her. She was at many of my events where I flew her in to give talks. Uh, which I repent and apologize for. I loved her and she loved me. We talked on the phone a lot. She, we emailed each other. At the beginning of every year, we would compare notes. She would call them her guides. She'd say, this is what the guides are saying about the coming year. And I would say, oh, this is what the angels are saying. Of course, we were both talking to demons. Right. And she died in 2014 before I was saved. So she didn't get a chance to get mad at me like a lot of my <laughs> older friends. As an example of one of the emails that I received from Dolores Cannon on December 30th, 2012, she wrote me a pretty long email. Here's the last part of it that is very telling, um, it kind of shocking now that I'm reading it out of the new age. And uh, so she says, this is the first time I have written two books in one year. The demand is great. And I'm traveling all around the world, constantly giving my classes. So Dolores would say that all the time, that the guides would make her work hard and would send her to places and tell her what countries not to go to, where it was not safe. And then she continues in the letter. She says, so I am staying busy. I suspect you are doing the same. And then this is the part that just shakes me now. She said, you said a few years ago that you wanted to take off and not travel so much. And that's true. I, I didn't like all the touring that I was always doing. So, so I had kind of confided in her that I wanted to stop traveling. And Dolores says to me, and she was like a mentor to me, you know, she was the same age as my mom. Um, she was someone I looked up to, I was reading all of her books, learning from her. So when she said this, uh, at the time, it makes sense. Now it's startling. So she said, 
But you know that once we signed on to do this work and spread the knowledge, we are more or less stuck. We can't get out of it that easily. So let me just talk about that. So she's saying that uh, she believes that we had a soul contract to teach about the new age. And in her mind, we were helping uh, and it was benevolent, helpful work to teach what she calls the knowledge. And so she said, we signed on to do this work. The belief was that each soul chose everything. They chose their parents. They chose uh, the time of their birth. They chose the type of work that they'd be involved in as a life purpose or a mission. So that's what she's talking about here, that once we chose it, we're stuck. And this just reminds me of uh, doing a deal with the devil that I've learned about since that that's just sounds so satanic that um, that anyway, so then she says we can't get out of it that easily. But that's not true. First of all, God is in charge of choosing everything. It's God's plan. It's not ours. He knit us together in our mother's womb. He was the one who initiated where we'd be born and when and and our life purpose for all Christians is the same. It's to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And so there's, I mean, spreading the knowledge as a Christian, of course, we are called to share the gospel in the Great Commission. It's not our knowledge. It's not secret wisdom. Most people have heard the gospel. We are to spread it because it's the power of God to salvation. So then she says, looking forward to seeing you again, my dear friend, love and light. Dolores, that love and light is a frequent sign off uh, of new agers. It, instead of saying, I'm praying for you, they'll often say, I'm sending you love and light. And it is superficial at best, uh, probably demonic at worst. And so that love and light, I learned the hard way when I left the new age that people who talk about love and light, they have fangs and claws if they don't like what you're doing. And when they say I'm sending love and light, they mean good thoughts, happy thoughts. Some A lot of it means I'm sending you energy healing. I'm sending you Reiki. So it's not like people who would pray in Jesus' name for you. Anyway, this letter, reading it now, uh, 10 years later, because she sent this to me in 2012, and, and I'm reading this in 2022, so 10 years later, it's it's startling. It shakes me up. I pray that she repented before her death, uh, like the thief on the cross. And uh, she was deceived, just like I was. So what, what hooked me in, Jan, was because she wrote books about pe her past life regressions with people who supposedly walked with Jesus. So she had a book called Jesus and the Essenes. The Essenes were a Jewish mystical cult that lived near Qumran, the Dead Sea, and this kind of cult of the Essenes is revered as, oh, they must have secret special knowledge. And you and I both know that hook. Of right. Wanting. And right. So, mm -hmm. so Dolores, she was a hypnotist. She started out with her husband before he passed as doing uh, stop smoking hypnotism. And from there, one time they were hypnotizing someone uh, about some something like weight loss and and and, hypnot and smoking, and she all of a sudden just kind of flipped into a past life memory, and I put that in quotes. Dolores regressed me too, and I just want to say that when she regressed me, I went back to Babylon where I was a male uh, astrologer priest, and it was very vivid. She had me drawing signs that I saw uh, that were carved in statues, and I was able to corroborate my past life regression with her historically with things that I didn't know at the time. So I was convinced, she was convinced. She she actually would have admitted she was skeptical in the beginning, but because she could corroborate a lot of this, mm -hmm. um, that uh, she believed it too. And, she, and I learned her hypnosis method too, because she would wow. teach it at my classes and such. And I, I passed it along, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I repent and apologize. But here's, here's the kicker. Um, there's a lot of new age material trying to explain the so-called lost years of Jesus between the time when his parents seemed to have lost him and went back and he was in the, of course, the synagogue. He said, I'm in my father's house. And then the start of his earthly ministry uh, with his baptism with John the Baptist and his temptation in the wilderness. And so there's that 
gap of time there, according to the new agers, they want to fill it in. And so the big uh, myths are that he went to India, uh, that he went to Qumran, that he was taught uh, how to do miracles. And of course, this is based on their belief that he was just a mortal man. They never acknowledge his divinity or that he is God. He's our creator. God the Father created through him. We see that in Hebrews 1, Colossians 1, Genesis 1, and John 1, very clearly. So, so there was uh, Ruth Montgomery was one of them. Um, this woman named Elizabeth Clare Prophet, spelled like a prophet, false prophet, uh, who you know, popularized this. And then Dolores kind of came on their heels in the 80s and 90s talking about this. So uh, she, I want to just read you an excerpt from her book, um, Jesus and the Essenes. And this is what hooked me. So Dolores said to the woman she's regressing, who says she remembers being one, this is blasphemy, you guys. This woman says she remembers being one of Jesus's teachers. Oh my. Qumran. Okay, so this is, this woman says she taught Jesus. Wow. And this woman said she's uncomfortable with this memory because she's a so-called Christian. And, and we know this is a demon oppressing her and Dolores and everyone through Dolores's books. Okay, so Dolores says, can you tell us the reasons for his, Jesus's death by crucifixion? Uh, in our time or where we're looking at it from, because these people supposedly were living in real time during uh -huh. their regression. So this woman's really back in the Dead Sea, uh, Qumran. Okay, in our time uh, of what we're looking at it from, it's said that Jesus died for our sins. There's some disagreement about this. Are we not responsible for our own actions? And the woman said, well, that's a very weighty question. Dolores says it has many answers, I suppose, because she does transcripts of her. Uh -huh. And so the woman says there are many influences upon these answers. He was to be crucified, to be ridiculed by others. So that's the purpose she's saying to show yeah. that when he again lived, that he was able to rise above this. And we too are able to rise above this. Um, and there's more that she says, and it's all blasphemy. Dolores says, then when they say Jesus died for the sins of all the people in the world, does this make, does that make sense? You can see her agenda. Right. So she, when you do hypnosis, I mean, even though it's, it's you and I did that video about hypnosis right. that we should refer people to. We'll link, yeah. I was taught to be hypnosis. You're supposed to be a blank slate and not lead people. She's leading this woman. So she says, then when they say that he, when they say he died for the sins of all the people in the world, does that make sense? And then the woman says, taking the bait, how can he die for someone else's sins? You must all pay for your own. If not this time around, then perhaps the next or even the next lifetime. But ultimately you must endure what you have made others endure because of you. Dolores goes, then his life, his dying will not wipe out the other people's sins. And the woman just goes into this thing called law of grace. So boom, that should convince any professing Christian to not listen to Dolores Cannon. But if that's not enough, uh, she, she, she started with these two books. They walked with Jesus and Jesus and the Essenes. And she got into then a woman who said that she was with Nostradamus and he wants mm -hmm. to talk with you, Dolores. And so there's three books that are supposedly un, um, mm -hmm. you know, unmasking Nostradamus' um, quadrants and how mm -hmm. he, he shuffled them because of the Inquisition going on then. And so she's explaining it. And then she got, after Nostradamus and the Jesus and the Essenes bits, she got into uh, ETs, really heavy. Wow. I, I'm pretty sure I read all of her books, except for the last two about the convoluted universe. I fell hook, line, and sinker for her work, you guys. Um, people are, who are going to write to me and say, but you don't understand. H Hello? I ate with her a lot. I traveled with her. I was on the phone with her. We were together in Hawaii giving a workshop uh, two years before her death with her daughter, who's running the program now. Uh, I knew her, and I believe that her intentions were sincere. I believe that she thought she was helping people to know the truth. I believe that she thought biblical Christianity, as the Bible teaches, was incorrect and that she was trying to correct everyone. Just like A Course in Miracles. That's another one mm -hmm. that I should add that Helen Shookman thought she was doing the same. But the devil was using Dolores. It's so hard for me to say this, Jen, because I loved that woman. Right. And, and it's easier for me to call out someone like Kenneth Copeland or Joel mm -hmm. Osteen, who I don't know, mm -hmm. than to call out people who I knew and lived with and breathed with and ate with. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to because her daughter is continuing her work and, and we need to pray for her daughter 
that her eyes are open to the biblical truth. And all these but- products that are out there, which is which really hurts my heart because when I was spiritually vulnerable after I cried out to Christ, I got um, the book Embraced by the Light or Embracing the Light by Betty Eady. And it just led me further down. I was vulnerable at that point. I was yeah. confused about what had happened with Christ and the Holy Spirit. And, and these books out there, if somebody is vulnerable at a point in time where they're wondering, they're searching, they're seeking, and they see things like this and they get those little hook, line and sinkers, mm-hmm. they can be easily deceived. But you mentioned something really important and it goes to the word 1 John 4, 1 about testing the spirits, that mm-hmm. we must test every spirit. And so you mentioned that First of all, she was talking about past lives and reincarnation. And we know based on the word of God that there is no such thing as a past life. There is no reincarnation. We're appointed to die once. Paul says to die, um, to be out of the body is to be with Christ. And of course, to die is gain. So that's um, so we have to test these things, guys, by the word of God and how they identify Jesus Christ. Doreen just mentioned that she did not acknowledge his divinity, that he is the son of God, that he is God. That's a red flag, a huge red flag. So I just want to encourage you to continue to test the spirits. And that's how you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. The book of Hebrews says we die once and then we go to judgment. So there is no second chance. There's no, there's no purgatory. There's no soul sleep where you get this chance to, you know, evolve. Uh, This is it. You either Uh, accept the gospel or reject it. You either accept Jesus and the truth of Jesus, that he's fully God, fully man, who came to earth from a virgin birth, and he lived a sinless life, and he took the punishment on the cross that we all deserve because we've all sinned, every one of us. And then he, after he physically died, he was in the tomb for three days, and he was risen, and people talked to him. He was physically risen from the dead, They ate with him. They touched him. They talked with him. He wasn't some spirit walking around like the Gnostics teach. Mm -hmm. And then he ascended where he's at the right hand of the father God, and he will return to judge us all. Those of us who are cloaked in his righteousness, not our own righteousness, not our own works, not because we're good people, but because we believe in Jesus, we're born again in Jesus. We will, we won't be judged for our sins. Our God has forgotten our sins. He says, amazing in the book of hebrews i know it's a miracle Mm -hmm. um but we're not to sin again we're to keep repenting right uh uh, but those who are not cloaked in jesus and i pray that dolores was i pray that she repented like the thief on the cross before she died and And that's possible we don't know possible no only god knows that i pray that when we get to heaven we see her there because she's a she is a super nice lady i mean she and like i said she was so she looked like someone you'd see. I kept saying that to her. She she dressed like someone who bought her dresses at Kmart. I, I'm not putting it down, but she was just so or, like ordinary in the way she dressed. There's most of us in the New Age. We had the glitter on. We had the long flowy costumes from India. We had paisleys all over. You know, everything was uh, culturally appropriated from India. We we were all dressing kind of weird. Is a good point. Uh, yeah. Out of the ordinary and. Um, and Dolores was not. She was dressed more normal than you and I dress now. She was yeah. just polyester dresses all the time. And she yeah. would drink, she would drink Coca-Cola nonstop. And she kept saying, the guides want me to drink, stop drinking Coca-Cola. It's gonna kill me. I just but made she- a video today about spirit guides. And that's another thing too. You know, once you hear her talking about spirit guides, you thought you were talking to angels. I, and of course, we believed at times we were talking to deceased people. And none of that is true. They're all demons. And these spirit guides masquerade, they they are acting like they are helping you. They're leading you to enlightenment, to wisdom. They're protecting you. And they're kind of like the, it reminds me of Ghostbusters, you know, the gatekeeper. Um, At least I know when I did readings, they would, you know, filter in and out who could come in and who couldn't come into the reading um, according to the client sitting in front of me. So that's a huge, but pointing out that she was so like down to earth and relatable. Yeah. And I mean, I was like business casual. I was very conservative when I was uh, shopped at the gap, you know, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. you know, but you can't be fooled by appearances. It doesn't matter. No. Would she have considered herself Christian or did she say she was spiritual? Cause spirituality and Christ consciousness mm-hmm. and all of this is not subscribing to any authority. It's just stealing from other people's belief systems. 
Yeah, she, we never really talked about that so much. So I can't with all authority say that she said she was Christian or not, mm -hmm. but I do know that she believed she had the inside track to what really happened with Jesus. And so she would, she would say that those who are fundamentalists like us mm -hmm. were, we were unaware, we were unwoke and it was her job to wake <laughs> us up to the truth. Right. And yeah. Uh, she, she struck me even kind of piecing together what she said about herself and her books, um, that she came from a, a very liberal Christian background that, you know, not steeped in the word. And a lot of the people that she interviewed, it seemed like they came from some of the uh, more charismatic and liberal mm -hmm. uh, den denominations. It's one more reason why it makes the flock vulnerable if the pastor doesn't point them to the word continuously right. and and also the pastors need to be calling the step out it shouldn't be you and me all the time being the people who are calling us out there pastors need to be at the pulpit saying stay away from paganism amen amen but there's so the the um the sermons are so watered down these days yeah. and the the um they're preaching a watered down gospel oftentimes a false gospel. And uh, we do need our, our pastors to, um, you know, buck up and get in there and, and warn the congregation yeah. about divination and false teaching. And I totally agree with you a hundred yeah. million percent. And you have to be so careful because you're going to hear Jesus words. You're going to hear God words. The woman that led the divination class that I was in, she said the, um, as a Catholic would know it, the Our Father, which is the Lord's Prayer. She had posters of scripture on her wall. And mm -hmm. what you're telling us is this woman, Dolores Cannon, is kind of on this mission about Jesus, but using his name. And that can suck somebody in because you're thinking, yeah. hey, I hear Jesus's name. That must be okay. That must be healing. That must be great. And um, you have to be super, super careful of that. Remember, you can't drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can't, you can't mingle Christianity with these new age philosophies and concepts. You can't do that. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Dolores taught that Jesus learned his miracles, including, I remember her saying that he learned to levitate. Uh, that stuck out oh, to me wow. and, and, uh, from the Essenes. And the Essenes were Gnostic, basically. And so we know that Paul was calling out Gnosticism in the book of Colossians and that it was a real problem back in those that time, like the New Age is now. And, and so she was, she was teaching things that um, kind of led me and others to believe, well, then I can do it too. You know, I can raise the dead. Mm -hmm. And, and there's no evidence that anybody has raised the dead. I remember my mom once when it looked like my cat had died. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she held the cat and he came, came back to life. And I was like, Oh, my mom raised my cat from the dead, but he was, he was probably just stunned. You know, <laughs> it's just, he probably just was, you know, had a little bit of a concussion. Um, but oh, there's, boy. you know, even Bethel church, there's supposedly a ministry of raising dead people person. And I've seen videos of him and, and he said he's raised over 500 people. And it's always in other countries. Of course, it's always in the third world countries. And, and there's no um, data on this or documents. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, same with people in our video that we did about deliverance ministry. People are saying, well, Jesus empowered his disciples in this, in the 72 and this other one man who's mentioned in Luke that, that they could all deliver demons. So therefore we can too. And then they get themselves in trouble because they're talking to Satan. They're talking to demons. And we have no business having conversations with these evil beings who, they, they hate us and they will manipulate and play dirty to more than any politician you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, <clears throat> they hold nothing back and, and they'll pretend to be whatever you want to be. So we have no business calling on demons to mm -hmm. get out of here. It just say, Satan's not afraid when we say Satan, you know, get out of the house. Uh, he, he'll laugh at us mm -hmm. and he'll pretend to go away and then go get seven of his friends and bring them back. So right. uh, we need to be praying for Jesus as the Lord's prayer says, deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. The Bible only says, <clears throat> the Bible only says to submit to the Lord and to, um, and, and the devil will flee. And the Bible says, stay sober minded and to put on the armor of God. It never says in the early church letters, when you read from Romans onward, it never gives instructions for us to cast out demons. And yet, uh, a lot of these people who get into this false Jesus via Course in Miracles, Dolores Cannon, uh, 
the Elizabeth Clare prophet, Ruth Montgomery and such, they, they go off on thinking they're Jesus. They, oh. they, they think that, you know, I'm, I can do what Jesus does. Well, he does say that these things are more you can do, but most scholars exegeting that in the original biblical language say in context, he's talking about that we can evangelize more than he could. We can share the gospel more than he could because we, we have here access we to the whole world. Yeah, here we are. Here we are with technology yeah. too. Yeah. Access to right. the whole world, being able yeah. to share the gospel the way that we do. But D, I, I just, I, um, here's another thing that um, this is really important for people to know, and we can see it from what you're saying. What you need to know is that psychic mediumship, all of the new age concepts like Dolores was teaching and still is, un unfortunately, through her uh, products that are still here, is that this is some sort of a supernatural gift. Like this is a gift from God. I was told I had a gift from God. I believed it because things really do happen. These you really are hearing from people. You mentioned before that when she was doing the hypnosis and then she started to get information. Mm -hmm. And that is when you're in a trance like state or a yeah. meditative state, you are open to demons and, oh, yeah. um, and you will get information. And the thing is that all supernatural things are not from God. So you have to be so extremely careful with that. Another thing I want to point out, uh, because it's not a gift. Look at all the courses being taught. I taught a divination class. I went to a divination class. There was a woman on TikTok who said, I see what Teresa's doing and I wanted to do it. I want to conversate with the dead. And you know what? She went to her local healing center, her, her new age center, of course, found a course on psychic development and she's doing readings. Mm -hmm. It's not a gift from God. God is clear in his word in Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12, not to consult or practice psychic mediumship, um, fortune telling, interpreting, interpreting omens. He finds it abominable. It's detestable to him, but he goes all the way even to the end of his word, warning us not to engage in these practices. So if you see somebody and they're throwing out Jesus words and they're promising healing and you say Dolores looked like, I don't know if she looked like, you know, our mother-in-laws or our mm -hmm. sisters or our grandma at some point, but she looked convincing, happy, healing. And it sounds good, especially if you're seeking, if you're hopeless, if you're lonely, if you're, you know, um, you want to know things, it always comes back to that knowledge, D. Yep. Yep. I mean, but the sa Satan's been doing that since Genesis chapter three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he can, he can have children seem to remember their past lives. And, you know, there's been a couple of kids who remembered their names and such, and they were able to go to the gravestone of that person and and to know things about their grandfather who passed before they were born and and there's things that we can't explain in our logical mind but the demons they're studying us so of course they can plant memories even even dolores talked about false memories in her books so she was aware of that um <clears throat> she talked about layers of memories there was one book she regressed a guy who was in is, is supposedly he was an et but at first to get to that layer uh, he had to go through believing that he was abducted and then he went to another layer and then it turned out that the, his memories of being abducted were someone else's past life memories, she said, that had been layered on him. And then he finally got to the truth that he was an actual ET. So, you know, it was just very it really, convoluted. Yeah, yeah. And delusion. It's delusional. Yeah. So now let's talk about her, her ET work because she was yeah. very, very obsessed with ETs. As I said, when she... Would when we would go places together, mm -hmm. she she would oh you know here's this woman I would also call her Aunt B from May, from Mayberry RFD because she looked like Aunt B a lot <laughs> she really did and you would you would expect her to talk about the coupons in her purse to buy Tide laundry detergent at ten cents <laughs> off but she she'd open her mouth and she would talk about the Greys and the aliens I mean that's she talked about it in public everywhere she went she'd sit next to you on the plane and she'd talk to strangers about aliens. I mean, she was an evangelizer for the demons and, and she, and she came across so sweet and normal and trustworthy and, and she came across so authoritative. I want to say that you, she, she was like, oh, this woman must know she's talking about. She's so sure of herself. She would, you know, she would, she was big woman. She'd plant herself as she was talking. She was loud, very loud voice and very powerful voice. And you go, oh, well, she must know more than me. You know, she's well, done all these regressions. She's older than me. 
That's such a good point, Dee. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you know what? I'm thinking about the mediums that are out there today on TV, very similar, so confident in the the deception and that that you, you, it's easy to believe them. Yeah. Well, I mean, what did Hitler say about telling a lie over and over again? People start to believe it eventually. And especially if they want to believe it, if people want to believe that this is not the only life they want to believe they get a second chance, like that movie Groundhog Day, they want to believe that they, you know, that their loved ones who died sinners are not in hell, Mm -hmm. that they're getting, you know, maybe now that my dad who died a sinner, he's my daughter in this life. And, Mm -hmm. and now there's a different chance for this for him, her, who can be a good person and go to heaven. I mean, you want to believe this is true if you are, uh, you know, anyway, so, so Dolores taught a lot about ETs and uh, she had this whole theology. I don't want to, I don't want to call it theology because Theo means God. It's a godless belief system mm-hmm. about um, the ETs landing in Canada to the indigenous people there. And and the ETs introducing society as a whole to technology. I mean, that's a lot of the ET community believes that, uh, that uh, we were a primitive peoples until the ETs showed up and, and showed us how to be, uh, how to have a government, which we know that God, that God it says in the Bible, God introduced government uh, as judgment. <laughs> Saul, was, Saul was judgment against sinful mm-hmm. creation. Uh, but also as organization and supposedly for fairness and ju- justice, you know, mm-hmm. but she, she believed the ETs brought all this to us. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And so I recently interviewed Joseph Jordan, who's been an ET UFO um, researcher for over 20, 27 years with MUFON, which is the top UFO investigator. I was a frequent guest on a very ET laden popular radio show called George Norrie's Coast to Coast. It used to be called the Art Bell Show before Art Bell quit because he got death threats. Anyway, I was a frequent guest on that and it was all about weird stuff, a lot of ET material. And Joseph Jordan came on my show because I used to be into ETs through Dolores Cannon's books largely. And then I got into other researchers. And when we'd go to South Point in Hawaii where there were supposedly UFOs, we'd look for them in Sedona, Arizona. And, uh, and, and so I really believed that there was abductions. Uh, there was a couple people who wrote with my publisher, Hay House, about their abduction experience. I believed them. I was friends with them. And Joseph Jordan found the most comforting truth that in the over 600 cases that he has interviewed, and he, he's a safety engineer, so he knows how to ask the right questions when he's, in, when he's interviewing people about what really happened with an accident. He knows how to get to the truth. He uses that technique to talk to people about their regression. And he finds that uh, those who are, uh, who who said the name of Jesus, called on Jesus, or said a a Bible verse, or sang a hymn in the abduction experience, the whole thing disappeared. The UFO disappeared, the ETs disappeared, and they woke up in bed, or they woke up in their car because uh, Dolores, most of her regressions were people in their car who got uh, abducted. So this is proof that these are demons, because what do demons do in the presence of our Lord? They tremble. They say, they recognize them. I, the, the, in um, the story of the demoniac, mm-hmm. the, 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 there was one man, two men that, there, but one man that Jesus was talking to. The demons named Legion, because there were so many recognized Jesus right off the bat and said, what are, what are you doing with us, O son of the God most high? So the mm-hmm. demons are using the name of God because they're afraid. Because mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. you no, know, that you see people do that. You can't mix the two. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and they recognize Jesus right off the bat. They're afraid of him. They know his power. And so it's no wonder that the ETs, when people call on Jesus, they're not doing deliverance. Joseph was really clear on that. They weren't saying you know, away from me, demons, to the UFO, to the ETs. They were asking Jesus to come into the experience and help them, and they disappeared. It's just wow. the whole thing vanished. Isn't yeah. that so cool? And That's so, amazing. Yeah, and so he 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 is just an amazing researcher. All the work that Dolores was doing, I hate to say it because I know that she meant well, and she was very popular at the same time as Matsuro uh, Emoto who you might remember, uh, who 
did a series of books and lectures, and he was also a friend of mine. I, I, I know I sound like I'm dropping names, but I hung out with, these are the people I hung out with because we toured together. So Emoto mm -hmm. was, he took pictures of water with the crystals, remember? I and, don't. Okay. Anyway, so, so they, <laughs> so Dolores and, and he called himself doctor, Dr. Emoto died virtually in the same week. It was really oh, weird. Wow. So we all made up the story that they were going on together to heaven to oh, help boy. us all. <laughs> heaven. I, I, yeah, well, I, I know, I know. I pray that. Well, how amazing would it have been? Not that we're going back. God is sovereign. He's in control. But I think it would have been pretty cool if she could have seen your um, your transformation, your salvation miracle. Yeah. That would have been uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, most of my so-called ex-friends are not talking to me. And okay. I, I've reached out to a few of them and I don't hear anything back. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to have to come up with these, these type of videos and warn people okay. because I know their work very intimately because it, it deceived me. Yeah. And it's a race to the finish. I mean, I think what people, mm -hmm. I, I, what I pray people would understand is we make these videos out of love, the love of Christ, because this is a battle for their soul. Today is the only day that we have right now. As far as we know, today is the day that we have. Today could be your day of salvation. And this is eternity on, on the table. This is eternity on the table. This is if we died today, where would you go? It's, it's eternity. Whatever happens here is so, it's just going to pass away. The material things, even your health, um, you know, whatever, whatever's going on in the world today is going to pass away and you're going to meet God. You're going to meet God and your relationship with his son is going to determine where you go. And we don't want you to be eternally damned. Okay. I'm just going to say it like it is. We don't want you to be eternally damned, nor do we want you to be demonically oppressed. If you continue falling for the trap of the new age, getting these books, believing the lies, you are inviting demons into your life, into your home. And these children that are reporting things, listen, I say all the time, Satan doesn't skip over your children because he thinks they're cute. He will attack through your kids. And if you invite this into your home, and then you're wondering why these kids are having night terrors, or, you, or they're talking about great grandpa, well, demons are telling them, Demons are telling them they've been watching your family. They know more about your family than you do. They've been studying you. They know your routines. They know your life. And they are intelligent creatures. They are not human beings, guys. They're not human beings. So we don't want to see you demonically oppressed. And we definitely don't want to see you eternally separated from God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can come to him today just as you are. Jesus saved me while I was a psychic medium and his first order of business was to get me out of there. But I didn't know that when I accepted him, I accepted his work on the cross. I am, I, I was, I was blown away. The Holy spirit came to live within my heart. And the first thing he did was lead me to the word of God. So be careful of that too. Notice a lot of people that are psychics and mediums and they're talking about Jesus. They won't lead you to read. The demons will not lead you to salvation. They will not lead you to read the entire word of God. They'll talk about God. Maybe they'll have a verse. Maybe they'll, you know, have this Christ consciousness or whatever they have gone, but they're not going to tell you to go read the word of God, because if you do, you're going to see the truth mm -hmm. that you ought not be doing that, that you ought not be practicing or consulting this. So the Holy spirit, who's the only good spirit, who is God will lead you and point you to Christ Jesus. I, I pray that you would know that. So when you hear this, it's very confusing, right? Because they're mixing it in. They're trying to mix in um, a little bit of truth with the lies. And you hear Jesus and now you're convinced and it sounds good and you're sad. No, go to God because he's the only one who can actually fulfill you, comfort you and give you peace and rest. And he's the only way um, to heaven, the That's real right. heaven, not the other That's side. That's right. Yeah, this appetite that we have to find the truth, to mm -hmm. find secret his, hidden wisdom that hooked me right in to Dolores Cannon, um, <clears throat> it's it's from the it's from the devil himself. He he puts this little hook out and says, "I can tell you the truth," and I I know you you're the same as me. You're just this truth uh, person, right? You just mm -hmm. want to know the truth. <clears throat> and Jesus said, know the truth and truth shall set you free. He's the way, the life, and the truth. And no one gets to the Father except through him. There's just no other way. I know that it seems like there's 
like all paths should lead to heaven as long as you're a good person because God is love. God is love. Yes, absolutely. Apostle John emphasized that. And he is, in addition to that, he's got other characteristics, other qualities that, such as justice, meaning that in justice, just like any good judge, he's going to, he's going to punish mm -hmm. any kind of crimes, any kind of wrongdoing. A lot of us get mad these days and our, our, this is being filmed in 2022 when liberal judges are allowing people who've committed heinous crimes to go free. Yeah. And then they go out and they recommit the crime again. Yes. Oh, and, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. and God's not like that. God is going to punish justly all the crimes. And, and that means that we all deserve punishment. We all deserve hell because we've all sinned against God. We've all broken the Ten Commandments. We've all just, for instance, dishonored our parents, every one of us. Every one of us has used the Lord's name in vain. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I grew up in Southern California where you would say, um, I don't even want to say it, but there's a popular valley girl saying that you would say that uses the Lord's name in vain. And, uh, and oh. we've all done that. Yeah, we've all done that. So yes, we have. Um, yeah. When you were talking about the ETs, though, D, I, I want to touch on on that real quick again. And I know you were going back there, too. And I, and I think that's good that you do, because that's something that piques so much interest for people. People are so into they're into these um, conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. They're into aliens they're into life uh forms on and other and so this is like i feel like a big hook for people yeah. and it doesn't help when you have these things on tv right like you don't you see those things on tv oh what was that oh what was that and they're talking it so it's really important that you're exposing that um and i am definitely going to link your video in, um, with joseph jordan here definitely go watch that guys because you need to know the truth about that don't get hooked into um mm. these demonic lies that are being spread and so easy to spread and then you find yourself gossiping with people which is another problem yeah and you're it, talking about these things but yeah well, the, all the et communities contradict each other anyway I mean, <laughs> you'll, you'll get confused if you get steeped in that, because you've yeah. got people like David Icke, who says that there's reptilians, who uh, is really who King Charles is, and a lot of the elites, oh. they're, they're really reptilians pretending to be people to trick us. And so they're all bad guys. And then Dolores Cannon used to say, yeah, but the greys, they're the good guys. And then other people say, no, the greys are tricking you. They're the bad guys. So none of them can, can agree. It's like in the New Age, we used to have these disagreements about the four uh, signs, you know, which archangel is which, which is the east and which is the west. And oh boy, you know, I mean, you know, people cannot agree when they're in deception. They make up their own rules. <laughs> so. Yeah, because it's so subjective. And that's, yes. so think about that. So you're so if you're in that world right now, I encourage you to get out of that and come to Christ for absolute truth, where you're not playing guessing games. You yeah. actually will know. Um, the truth about all of these issues come to Christ today because Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And I know we repeat that, but we repeat that for a very good reason, because all that confusion is from the devil and his servants who again, masquerade as angels of righteousness, as servants of righteousness. They masquerade as angels of light. He is a copycat. He is a phony baloney the devil, and he pretends to be, but he, he pretends to be the light, but he's not the light. He's the right. false light. Jesus is the true light of the world. And like Doreen mentioned before, when demons know, <clears throat> and they bow down to Jesus Christ, the light of Christ will shine um, on the darkness. I'm telling you, uh, the devil, the devil's fake light, does not. It will put you into confusion and it will put you into a hamster wheel and a rabbit hole of destruction. That's where it will lead you. And servants of righteousness, well, they think you think they're helping you. You think they're comforting you. You think they're giving you all this great information that you deserve and you're entitled to. And like you said before, this esoteric knowledge um, that because everybody wants wisdom at the end of the day. I mean, I, even in the chakra system with the third eye, ooh, enlightenment, ooh, wisdom. <laughs> You know, you, you know, <laughs> he and I laugh with, um, no, seriously, this is the reason why we, we come out and do this. So, so bottom line is Dolores Cannon, mark and avoid anything you see, go to God for the exit out of temptation. He will provide that. He really does. He really will offer that. 
um, this subjective, these subjective um, experiences are not anything to put your hope in, to put your trust in. As you've heard today, they're confusing. They contradict each other, like most subjective experiences do. And when you're hearing from demons, remember, they're liars. So what one told Dolores, what one told you, and what one told me could be three different things because mm -hmm. they're going to they're going to use it to appeal to whoever we're, um, you know, talking to, whoever we're dealing with. And it's just so extremely dangerous. And when we la we're not laughing about that. We don't find it funny. We don't find what the devil does funny or what his demons do funny. We're both um, saved out of that and extremely grateful to be saved out of that. It's a hatred like no other hatred that the devil has. And he hates you and he hates God. Mm -hmm. And that's his mission. So remember, even when cops use psychics or, or um, they, you, oh, they're finding missing people, they're finding missing children. Well, demons saw where that body was put. Okay, I'm just going to be very blunt here. They saw it and you think that they're helping you and it's all through lies. It's all through lies. They're not connecting with your mom or your dad from the other side. There's no other side. There's heaven and there's hell. Okay, I hope I state that well and not to go into the whole Hades paradise situation, but um and it's not help at all. Why? Because even if you hear something that you like, they don't mind to give you a little something that you want or you like. Remember when he tempted Jesus in the, in the wilderness, I can give you all of this, the devil mm -hmm. said to him. They have power. They can do things. They don't care if you get a little something here as long as you get away from God. So it's no help at all to see these people, to read these books. No help at all because it is your soul again, it's on the table. Yeah, right. we, gotta, we have I to be careful. No, I, I love when you're really bold and clear like that, sis. I mean, that's, okay. that's what everyone needs. Um, we, we need to not sugarfoot or uh, sugarcoat the truth or, or tiptoe around it. I mean, you either go to heaven or hell, and it's the only way to heaven is Jesus. It's the bottom line. And remember that God is not a God of confusion. He's the God of peace. And so if you're, Finding confusion in the new age path, of course you are, because the devil is the father of lies and lies are confusing and they don't, the dots do not connect. They can't, they contradict right. each other. It's a web of lies and it will never give you peace except for maybe a minute. I remember having a minute of peace after a yoga class, after uh, teaching, you know, a class or something, and then it, boom, it'd be a crash again. And, and so there's loneliness, there's depression, there's anxiety that's built into the devil's web. And he keeps promising you that if you just learn one more thing, if you just read one more book, take one more class, get one more regression, then you'll get your soulmate, your abundance, your healing center, your life purpose, you know, your health. He promises you the world, but he never delivers ever. And he won't. I mean, i I was 59 years old when I was saved. So I was in the new age from the time I was born. Actually, my mom couldn't get pregnant for seven years. So she went to a, a, a kind of an occultic church mm -hmm. and put in a prayer request and got pregnant with me right away. And so I was born into deception. So 59 years of being in this junk. And I can tell you that I was a vehement seeker since the time I was 12, my, re wow. reading, reading all these books. And if I couldn't find it in, what is that, um, 47 years, what makes you think you're going to find it? There's, I've, I've read all the books, taken all the classes, or many of them. I studied world religions. Um, to, took, I had a BA and MA in psychology. I was looking for the answers. Looking, and all the, so stupid, <laughs> you know, face, palm, face palm. It was, on, <laughs> it was on my bookshelf the whole time in the Bible. And why did I go everywhere but the Bible? Why did I try to learn about Jesus through Dolores Cannon and Ruth Montgomery and the Course of Miracles instead of the Bible that's been sitting on my shelf since I was a kid? The, you were the, so it's deceived. The it, yeah. Yeah. You were oppressed. And that's why we're warning people today. We don't want to see you oppressed. Isn't it amazing? The Bible was in my house too, my whole time growing up, never cared about it, didn't want to uh, look at it, but I believed every lie that the new age sold me every single one. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, love tells the truth. I want to remind people that I think we're really hitting home with not tickling people's ears. There's enough of that out there. You don't want that. You want the truth. Um, you know, we have a disease it's called sin. 
we know the cure for it. His name is Jesus. If you had cancer, um, if you had the cure for cancer, I would pray that you would give me the cure if I had it. We know the cure to disease. The biggest disease is sin. Love tells the truth. You don't want to go, the new age is going to lie to you over and over and over again and keep you where they are. And, and that's because they're deceived. Okay. But you really need to hear the truth because as Doreen mentioned before, the truth will set you free. The world has tried to steal that um, statement. Those are, that is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He sets mm -hmm. you free. He sets right. us free from the bondage to sin, not your headache. He didn't die on the cross for our headache. He didn't die on the cross for our, our pocketbook. He died on the cross for our iniquities, for our transgressions to set us free so that we would have the way to be with our holy God. Mm -hmm. Although we are broken, dirty sinners, he made the way because we can't be in the holiness of our Lord in our sin. But Jesus stepped out of his kingdom of heaven and into humanity. He committed no sin, yet he was tempted, yet he hungered. He thirsted, he felt anger, he felt grief, he committed no sin and took a horrible death and a horrible torture. It's emotional, but he did. He did that for us and, um, and he is the way and he is the truth just to set us free out of that sin. And then when we accept the work on the cross and we put all of our faith and trust in him and we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that he is Lord, we are saved. The Holy Spirit comes to live within your heart, Ephesians 1.13, and seals our inheritance, which is the kingdom of heaven. And then the Lord sees us as righteous and redeemed. Jesus's righteousness is imputed onto us. And it's, it's something that we're just encouraging you. And I know I get passionate a lot and I don't want anybody to mistake that for impatience or anger or anything like that. It's just that today is our day. And I just don't want you to be, um, I don't want you to be living in the lies that we were in, in the darkness. That's right. We have to be careful. This is, I know that these, these um, teachers like Dolores Cannon are so convincing and they have charisma and they seem to be authoritative and they have books published, which makes them seem like they're authoritative and they know what they're talking about. And lots of followers. But as Jen mentioned, the test of the spirits, uh, the apostle John, who lived and was one of the closest disciples to Jesus during his ministry, he was one of the few who got to go uh, into the Jairus's daughter being raised from the dead, who got to go to the Mount of the Transfiguration. Can you imagine what that would have been no. like? Well, and <laughs> and he, even the, the sorrow of the prayer of Gethsemane uh, yeah. before his crucifixion. So John was there and he recorded it. He was one of the last gospels to record it. I can imagine the anguish he must've gone through to, to go through and write his, his um, gospel and then his letters. And in his first letter, uh, in chapter four, he warns people because he knows how much false teaching there was then. And, and of course, there still is to compare the spirit that people are talking about and using to the truth. And if that person is not confessing Jesus biblically, mm -hmm. he, he was fully God, fully man. It is the Antichrist spirit. It's not even just a false spirit. It's the Antichrist against Christ. And we know that in the book of Revelation and the books of Thessalonians from Thessalonica, uh, that the Antichrist is, there's many of them already here, and the Antichrist is right before Jesus' return. So uh, we just have to be careful that we're not part of ushering in the Antichrist. Right. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Dee. Um, I have a video about Dolores. Can I mean, the whole thing started, people asked me to make a video about Dolores. So yeah. I put together a short one for TikTok. Uh -huh. And so, uh, I, you know, just to uh, reiterate what I said earlier. So when I told Dee about it and she's like, I knew her, I said, oh boy, we yeah. got to do this video. I, I know. I, I Maybe you can help me because I knew a lot of these folks. Sylvia Brown. And we talk about this in my morning lives. And of course I said, Hey, you know, Doreen knew her and, and I toured, toured with her. her. Yeah. Yeah. And toured with her. And again, um, that, yeah. So I've been wanting to put a video together about mediums on TV shows. Mm -hmm. I know I had yeah. told you about that. That might be a great, you Let's know, thing to put together. It takes a lot of courage. It's not easy. To well, it's, it's, it, it hurts my heart because, you know, I love these folks. A lot of them are still living though. And there's still yeah. time. Like, I mean, if God can save you and me, 
Yeah. You can save anybody. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Cause, cause we, were right. all, we, we were all in the deception, 100%. We were, we were getting paid for the deception and, uh, and such. And so we can see this so clearly because we were there. Yeah. And we need to be praying for these public meet. I mean, for all Please. these, let's pray yeah. for you guys, pray for the mediums and pray for the people seeking them out. And yeah. again, whatever they look like on TV, that has nothing to do with what it is. That's just a false, that's a facade. It doesn't matter how big the hair is, how the nails are. You know what I mean? Where I'm going with that. It doesn't matter how confident they seem. It doesn't matter um, if they're wearing, you know, little Gothic type outfits or Walmart. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's divination and it's dark and it's demonic. So All right. Well, I thanks think, so much for picking yeah. my brain about Dolores. I really appreciate it. it. It opened my eyes when I did research for this video and, yeah. and went back and looked at her. I have not looked at her books since I probably, you know, knew her. And so to look at them again through the lens of biblical worldview wow. was, was, Shocking. it was, it was edifying. It was good to see. Wow. And I, I, I saw the influence she had on me. Wow. My goodness. gracious! So, so this is, this has been helpful. I mentioned today in my live, I said, you know, you had such a huge platform in the new age and God is using all of that. Nothing. It, it was not for nothing. You know, uh, God doesn't waste a moment of our lives. I believe he saves mm -hmm. us and then he sends us out. And now you're using, you're such a warrior for Christ oh, as a soldier for using it all. Cause you've got a lot. Well, I this, see, you know. I see a lot of the marketing techniques that I used, my publisher used in the new age with people who are trying to convince Christians that it's okay to be a Christian, which or a Christian astrologer right. or a Christian yoga and all these things that are pagan right. and calling them Christian. And I get so mad, yeah. so angry. And I know a lot of it is because I did that myself, mm -hmm. which I repent and apologize for, because I used to twist scripture to justify mm -hmm. what I was doing. And only the people who didn't know the Bible would believe it because I didn't know the Bible. They didn't know the Bible. So we were the blind leading the blind. Right. And, and it's just, I mean, time's growing short. Jesus yeah. is going to return and we, we don't have second chances. This is it. That's right. And there's a real surge too, with the use of technology. I mean, Satan is current. He is active. The demons are active and they're using technology. You have yeah. Christian witches and christian yeah. psychics all over there's, TikTok. Yeah, there's no such thing of course uh, there's no such thing tarot card readers um a click of a button that's all it mm. takes these days and they are um really coming after your kids too i i really am passionate about that um doreen said that she was 12 when she was seeking and searching i also was 12 when i had my first experiences with demons and then it just continued from there so children are oppressed they're not gifted and the devil comes for them listen he he wants to have a whole new oh, line yeah. of psychic mediums and tarot mm -hmm. card readers and and it's really uh he's a terrorist oh, and yeah. um, and that's all it is but yeah. i know i could go on forever but oh yeah <laughs> well thanks for being with me thank Doreen. you thank I you, love sis. you sis. love you too so much